With this question here, I just want to give a quick little note for CAPS learners, which most of you watching this are CAPS learners, because most uh, most um, or the most popular curriculum um, or most learners in South Africa do CAPS, um, then this question is perfect for you. But for the IEB learners, you could of course still do this question because it's going to give you a very good idea of what to do um, when you get a question like this new exam. But I know that in previous years, the IEB does not include um, ketones as well as aldehydes. If that has changed, well then, of course, you can now do this question. But this question is going to be looking at one of these, okay? I won't say exactly which one. I don't want to spoil the fun. So for IEB learners, you can choose to do this question or you can decide to uh, skip it. Um, I would actually say try doing it. Um, just to see how we would approach this because in your exam you're going to get something exactly like this but they're just not going to have aldehydes or ketones they're going to have alcohols for example okay so it says here um to which homologous series do the above compounds belong so what does homologous mean homologous means um well, some learners say homologous i mean that's perfectly fine um homologous is uh, what kind of molecule is it? Are they alcohols, alkenes, alkynes, esters, carboxylic acids, um, aldehydes, ketones? You know, those are the different homologous groups. Now, if you look here, all of these end with the word one. And guess what? Ketones also have a one in them. So these are ketones. Okay. Now, the melting points of compounds A, B, and C are compared okay so here's the melting points of a b and c it says write down the controlled variable for this comparison so when we do experiments there are certain things that have to remain constant um, across across um, the experiments you can't change too many variables because then you don't know which variable is actually causing the change. So what they are doing is they are only using ketones. So write down the controlled variable. That could be the type of homologous series. So let's say type of homologous. That's the thing that they are keeping constant or controlled. You can also say... Um, you could say that, or you could say functional group, okay? Um, members of the same homologous series, they will all have the same functional group, okay? Because a functional group is what makes it the, a specific homologous series. If you have, for example, a molecule that has an OH like that, and all the rest is hydrogen, well, because of that functional group, we would say that this is a alcohol homologous series, okay? So these two are very much uh, correlated with each other, okay? Guys, is it weird that while I'm recording, um, I sometimes like to make sure that there's no background noise. So on my phone, I have a little decibel meter. And let's say, for example, um, at the moment, there was a washing machine that was in the background. So as soon as the washing machine, sometimes when the washing machine finishes, um, it plays like a little tune, like do, 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 do. But then this one goes on for a long time. And so when that's playing, I actually take out my phone's decibel meter and I hold it up in the air behind my head to try to see if the washing machine is coming through on the video. Quite a nerd, eh? But yeah, the things I do for you guys, look at me, making my life, I'm going crazy. So <laughs> the melting points, okay, where are we? We're here, hey? Eh? Not on the controlled variable. So it says the melting points of compound C and D, oh, by the way, if you're interested, the decibel, um, the washing machine was registering a 39 decibel for those of you that are like into this kind of stuff. Look, I'm not into that kind of stuff, but you know, I find it interesting just to make sure the sounds are good. The melting points of compounds C and D are now compared. Okay, so now we're comparing C and D. Okay. Fully explain the difference in the melting points of these two compounds. So what I would always like to do is I would always go and draw it out. Okay, so pentan, that means five carbons. One, two, three, four, five. 
on carbon two, there is a uh, the ketone part. Now the ketone part is just a double bond oxygen. That's it. Now I just go put hydrogens everywhere else. There we go. And then this one is a BUT, so that's a four carbon. So let's actually let's actually be cool here. So let's do that, and then just remind ourselves that that's that one. And then this one is going to be this other molecule. Okay, so that's got a four carbon because it's got a BUT. Then on carbon number, ah, very sneaky. Some of you are going to be like, Kev, they didn't tell us where to put the double bond. Now, be very careful here. You can only... Uh, well, let's let's first go just work out this 3-methyl. So they're saying that on carbon-3, so I'm just going to go from the left. You could also go from the right if you wanted to. On carbon-3, there's a methyl, okay? So that's a one-carbon branch. Okay, good. Now, some of you are like, yeah, but Kev, where do we put this double bond, my bro? Like this double bond oxygen for the ketone. Some of you are like, should we put it there? Now, eh, that is wrong. What you just did there, my friend, is you've just made an aldehyde. Why? Here we go. Aldehyde is when you have a double bond oxygen on the side of the molecule. Aldehyde, side, aldehyde, side. Okay, I'm sure you can't wait to be done with that riddle. Okay, so we're not going to put it there. So then some of you are like, okay, okay, my dude, I'll just put it over here. No, but then you're doing the same thing. Then it's a aldehyde. Why? Because double bond oxygen is always on the side. So the only option you have is there. Because ketones are when you have a double bond oxygen somewhere between two other uh, carbons. That's what makes it a ketone versus an aldehyde. Okay, and then, um, yeah, so that's it. Now we're just going to go put hydrogens everywhere else. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, you don't need to say boom every time. There we go. Okay, so what else, what else, what else, what else, what else? Okay, so there we've drawn the molecule. Oh, yes, I wanted to put the little green uh, thing so we can just remember which is which. There we go. So we've spoken about melting points, boiling points, when we are looking at branches, right? We've looked at how do branches affect boiling and melting points. Now let's just go through the thinking between, behind this again once more. I'm going to use an example here. So let's say we have um, a three-carbon molecule. And then that is obviously going to have a whole bunch of hydrogens, which I'm going to leave out for now. Now, if you put that next to another three-carbon molecule, then in between those two molecules, we know by now that there are these things called intermolecular forces. And those intermolecular forces hold the molecules together. Okay, it's like an attraction force. It's like a magnetic. Okay, it's not magnetic, but you can think of it like that. It's easy to visualize when you think of it like that. It holds them together. And the closer that these two molecules can get to each other, the stronger those intermolecular forces can become. Just like with magnets. If you hold the magnets far apart, there's not much happening. You hold them closer together, and suddenly there is a fairly large force. This would be a scenario where there are no branches. Okay, so this is no branches. Okay, let's write that a bit better. No branches. If we do have branches now, then the situation is a little bit different. Then you're going to have molecules that look like that. Once again, in between them, there will be intermolecular forces. However, because we now have this branch over here and this branch over here, we can see that this molecule cannot get as close to this molecule like we had over here. Like if I wanted to, I could have pushed these two molecules much closer together. But by having these branches, they get in the way. The branches get in the way, and 
the molecules cannot pack together nicely or as well as when there are no branches. So because they cannot pack as closely, they cannot get as close together, it's like having magnets that are further apart, and so the intermolecular forces are not as strong in a situation like this. So if you are a boiler man, so you're a person that likes to boil molecules, okay, I'm just making that up, there's no such thing as a boiler, I mean you get people called boilers I think, but that was like an olden day type of thing, but Imagine there was a job called a boiler man, and the boiler man's job is to, um, okay, well, Kev, it is the 21st century, you can't be saying boiler man. Okay, let's say you get a boiler person, okay, a boiler, a boiler, he, she, they, and, <laughs> ooh, ooh, Kev, you're playing with fire, yeah. So you get a boiler, he, she, they, and a boiler, he, she, they, um, their job is to try boil these molecules. Now, how do you boil molecules? Well, you 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 add enough heat so that these intermolecular forces can be overcome so that these two molecules can then move apart and go into the gas phase that is what boiling is you're adding enough energy to try overcome these little forces in between here and allowing the molecules to move further apart allowing them to convert into gas because gas molecules are further apart compared with liquid molecules that are closer together. So if you are a boiler, he, she, they, then is it going to be easier for you to um, overcome these forces? Or is it going to be easier to overcome these forces? Well, here comes the famous line. Well done if you said that it will be easier to overcome these forces. Why? Because these molecules are not able to pack as closely together, the intermolecular forces cannot be as strong, so it will be easier for the boiler, he, she, they, to separate um, the, for the, yeah, to separate the molecules, and so less energy is needed, and so the boiling point would be lower. You don't need as much energy, so the boiling point, the temperature at which it boils, doesn't need to be as high. Okay, so let me now show you how to answer this question in the perfect structured way to get your four marks. Okay, so that should lay a good foundation for you to now remember how branches affect intermolecular forces. So now if we had to look at this one and this one, and of course with intermolecular forces you must imagine that there was in another one like this, okay? So if we had another one for example with five carbons, um, then it would have that and you'd put them next to each other because remember when we are looking at intermolecular forces we are looking at the forces between the molecules, we're not looking at the forces inside the molecule. Okay, so you've got to imagine that there was two of them like that. In real life, there's not two of them. There's trillion, 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 trillions. <laughs> it's not a number, Kev. I know, but it's a big number, okay? And so, um, and, then, and then here, you've got, you've got one that has four, but then it's got this big branch. And so it's this big branch that is what's going to be the deciding factor for us. So we learned now, or we revised over here earlier, that branches, they get in the way and they make it more difficult for the molecule uh, to get close enough together so the intermolecular forces are not as strong because they further apart and things like that. So we know then that the intermolecular forces for this scenario is going to be much stronger than the intermolecular forces over here. So it would be easier to separate um, these molecules from each other because it's easier to pull them apart because the intermolecular forces are not as strong. So the boiling point or the melting point would be a lot lower over here, meaning that you don't need a high temperature to cause it to, to melt, okay? And I know earlier when I was talking over here, I might have used the word boiling point, but boiling, melting, I'm not saying it's the same thing, it's definitely not, but it's the same concept. The one is just going from solid to liquid, the other is just going from gas to, or liquid to gas. But it's the same idea, right? We, 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 um, yeah, it's, we're just changing phase. Okay, so we know then that 
Okay, now we need to know how to write the answer for uh, four marks. So what you'll do is you'll first talk about the structure, okay? So we'll say that uh, pentan21 is less branched. Of course, you could say not less branched, less branched, uh, less branched than uh, three methyl butane. You could also say the other one is more branched. You could say this one is more branched. It doesn't really matter, guys. Um, three methyl butane one. Okay, there we've spoken about the structure. Now we're going to talk about the intermolecular forces. Um, so or the strength of them at least. So we could say that the intermolecular forces in this one will be stronger. So the intermolecular forces in Pentan 2, 1 are stronger than in 3 methyl butane 1. Then we talk about the energy. More energy, or you could say less energy, depending on which one you're talking about, right? Of course, I'm just using one argument, but you could use the reverse. You could say the other way around. Doesn't matter. Let's just clear up some space here. More energy will be needed. Now, for the CAPS learners, most of you watching this are CAPS learners, um, you can say the word overcome, but you can also say the word break, whereas IEB learners, they don't like you to use the word break. Okay, so more energy will be needed to overcome or break the intermolecular forces in uh, pentan 2, 1. Therefore, uh, pentan 2, 1 has a higher molting point. Some of you are like, yeah, but Kev, this is not higher than this, my bro. Yeah, but remember, it's negative. So negative 92 is a smaller number than this one. So this one has a higher melting point in this one. So just the layout once again, we spoke about the structure, then we spoke about the intermolecular forces, then we spoke about the energy, and then the conclusion.